how can we get ready for the persecution? This may sound very simple, but I actually plead to write it down. How can we get ready for the persecution? This is from a woman who's been there. Again, she's since gone home to be with the Lord, but she was already after going through Nazi concentration camps. She was getting ready for the coming tribulation. By that time, she was in her 70s. How can we get ready for the persecution? Number one, we need to feed on the word of God. When we say feed on it, when the Lord says feed on it, he literally means to feed on it, to digest it, to make it part of who you are. It has got to be your life. When someone says, oh, I understand you're a Christian, but you got to do this anyway because it's your job title. I understand it may violate your conscience. You got to put your hand up and say, no, it's, it's more than that. I apologize if I gave you the impression it's just a conscience thing. I apologize if I gave you the impression that it's just when I go to Sunday school or church and I'm a Christian there, but Monday through Friday, I'll be whoever you want me to be. I'll support whatever you want me to support. I apologize for that. You see, I, I'm not just a Christian. I am a Christian, but what that means, because I know it's been redefined nowadays, that means that the word of God is, is, is my life. It's my breath. I wake up in the morning. It's who I am now. I'm no longer who I used to be. So when you tell me to deny my faith, you're telling me to deny myself. And I'm not going to deny myself because that's who I am now in Christ. See, i got to tell you, it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me, the hope of glory. And the life that I live by faith in this body, I live by the Son of God who died and gave himself for me. So I apologize if I gave you the impression, or if, for that matter, any Christian may have given you the impression that something we could turn on or shut off, that we could just kind of lay down. And then come Sunday, we could put on our church face. And then Monday through Friday, where, you know, we'll be whoever you want us to be. No, I, that's not the way it works. Listen, creation is, is laboring for the revealing of the sons of God. And who are the sons of God? Precious women, it's not just men, even though it includes men. All who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. A son in the family holds a higher position. They have the blessing God sees us as mature saints in the body of Christ. And that's how we are to walk. So again, number one, we need to feed on the word of God, digest and make it our part of our being. This will mean, here it is, this will mean disciplined Bible study each and every day. This means to memorize passages of scripture. Not just the short ones, but the long ones. This not only means to memorize it, to digest it, and to study it, but to also walk in it. When God says, by the stripes of Jesus, you've been healed, and you can hardly walk, you, you got to say, by the stripes of Jesus, I've been healed. But, but, but you're looking pretty, you know, you're looking pretty sick. Well, I, but I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, because that's what God says. With all due respect to even my precious body, He's got this. My body will line up with the word of God. By the stripes of Jesus, I've been healed. Oh, you're thinking crazy thoughts? Yeah, but you know what? I got the mind of Christ. Yeah, but you know, you remember when you were diagnosed with schizophrenia, right? But now you became a Christian, and now I know, I know you're saying you, you're getting into the Bible and stuff, but you know, you can never get healed from schizophrenia, you know, the obsessive compulsion disorder. You say, no, and this, and I, I got to tell you, <laughs> It's not what I say, it's what the Bible says. It's because that's now who I am. That's my life. I have, I have the mind of Christ. God has not given me a spirit of fear. Oh, wait, hold on. But you used to suffer with anxiety and panic disorder. <laughs> no, I hear you. But see, since I became born again, I gave my life to Christ, and I fully surrendered my entire life to Jesus. He's been teaching me some, some things, and, and he's been cleaning me out, you know, healing my heart, healing my, my spirit from all sorts of abuse. And well, you know, God's told me, God, he's not, he, he has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. My body tends to tremble. My heart seems to race, but it'll line up with the word of God. I have to, I have to understand. I got to walk in this thing because it's truth. Because right now, the world is seeking to strip us from who we are. What do you think the devil's doing when it comes to these precious souls with transgenderism? I'm just using that as just one example. 
It doesn't have to even be a man trying to be a woman or a woman trying to be a man. Now you got men trying to be dogs. I identify myself as a cow, as a rat. It's going to get, listen, it's going to get crazy. It's going to get crazy. I identify myself as a tree because I love the environment and I want to go green. So I painted myself green and now you can identify me as a tree and that means I don't pay taxes because taxes, trees don't pay taxes. <laughs> but it's true. These people are able to be swayed by every wind of doctrine because they're not solidified by the very word of God, which is their life. The word of God has to be your life. With all due respect, again, as to what your body may say, what your mind may say, what the sin nature may say, what the world may say, you got to go by the word of God. Again, I'm still on number one right now. We need to feed on the word of God. We need to digest it. We need to make it a part of our being. This will mean disciplined Bible study each and every day. Now, listen, for all of us, we got a lot of busy schedules here, but there's no excuse. There's no excuse. You eat every day. Unless you decide to fast. <coughs> but you get my point. You eat every day. This is the bread of life. Amen. It's simple, right? It's like, oh, well, I already have disciplined Bible study. Well, praise God. If, you're, if, you, if, it's, if it's too busy, you know, and I understand that. We've got a very busy household on my end, too. Start taping up some scriptures. Put them on your bathroom wall. Put them on the door of your shower. Look crazy. I don't care. God doesn't care. Just get it in you. And walk it out. Walk it out. You can memorize all the scripture because that's part of it too. But listen, are you walking this thing out? Are we walking it out, friends? Can we say amen? Are we walking this thing out? Amen. We're, we're in training. We're in training. We can't, listen, come the time of persecution, people are going to then give their life to Christ. Okay, that's great. But they're going to be like babies. They're not going to know what to do. They're not going to be able to hardly walk. I mean, everything's going to be so new. We have to get this thing now for us who have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Next. How can we get ready for the persecution? Next, we need to develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, again, I said it may sound simple, right? For some who are tuning in, you're probably like, okay, come on, evangelists. It's got to be more than this. No, there is more, and you need to go come to the tour so you can receive more. There's a whole lot more. Oh, there's so much more. But see, we, we have to get this established on the very first conference. Let me take that back. God has to get this established on the very first conference that before we even delve into all that we're going to be delving into with the additional conferences, we have to be established we have to have a developed personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That means your own walk with the Lord. I see some precious children in the house. Not the faith of your precious parents, your faith in Christ. It's got to be personal. It's got to be individual. Very personal. You got to know that you can talk to God with in regards to anything. If you're having trouble in school, you can say, God, Jesus, Lord, I need your help. They're really starting to pressure me at school. They want me to start taking some drugs. They want me to get involved in some, into some kind of sexual temptation, and I think I'm being tempted. I need your help. That goes for young and old. A personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be volatile. I'm not talking about just the Jesus of yesterday. I'm talking about the life-changing Jesus of today. He's life-changing. We have people trying to ban this book and say, oh, this is, you know, from, this is for old people or from back in the day or that, you know, the, the acts went out with the disciples and, the, you know, the, the works of the Spirit is no longer in operation or the gifts of the Spirit is no longer in operation. Let's just get it out. Let's just ban it all together. Now you have, again, Christian churches that have banned the book. They bring in New Age teachings, and they're not going to make it. We have to make it. It's a matter of life and death, blessing or cursing. And God is telling us to choose life so that we can live. This Jesus sits at the right hand of the Almighty God. Now, there may be somebody in here or somebody who's tuning in 
that you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You're like, I'm hearing you. I saw all that you brought, and it's kind of tripped out. It's kind of scary, but um, I'm okay with this Christian stuff. Is this what it's all about? It's about religion. Is this what you want me to do, join a religion? No. You need to get right with God. You need to get saved. You need to be born again. You see, Jesus came to the earth over 2,000 years ago, born to the Virgin Mary. Yes, I believe she was a virgin. I believe what the Bible said, that the angel Gabriel came to her, called her a favored woman of God, and planted her, excuse me, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her, got her pregnant so that she could give birth to the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not these so-called false messiahs we were watching earlier. That was a joke. I'm talking about the true living God, the Lamb of God that was slain, the one who was from everlasting, the only begotten Son of the living God, the great I Am. I'm talking about the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the one who was dead and is alive, and behold, he's coming. He's alive forevermore. That's the Messiah. That's Jesus. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. The personal relationship has to be very personal. It's easy. He did all that he needed to do. He came, like I said, over 2,000 years ago. He walked this earth being born through the Virgin Mary, sinless, purposed as a sacrificial lamb of God. He went to the cross taking on the sin of all mankind. This is for those of you who may not even be saved or born again. Those of you who may be tuning in, we always get precious viewers who are not Christians. They're atheists, they're Buddhists, they worship, you know, they're Muslims, they worship Allah. And Jesus said he went to the cross to take upon your sin upon himself so that if you would only believe in him, you would not perish but have everlasting life. God loved us that much. Jesus came on behalf of the Father. It's the Father's love that sent his only begotten son. It's the Father. With all due respect, look, Jesus is the Lamb of God. He's our Savior. No one gets to the Father but through him. But it's the Father's love that sent his only begotten son for us. The Father is in love with us. He gave his only begotten son. He didn't have ten other Jesuses. He had only one. This personal relationship with the living God is crucial to the coming persecution. Because when you're feeling like you're falling away from the faith, you can go to him. He'll be able to bring you, draw you to him to talk to him. But if you're not saved and if you're not born again, if you've never fully surrendered your entire life to Jesus Christ, you're going to be tempted. You're going to be tempted to fall away from the faith because there's no personal relationship. The devil's seeking, listen, he's seeking your faith. He's seeking people's souls, right? But as far as a Christian goes, he's seeking the faith of, of the Christians. He wants to tell God, look, these, they, they, don't have no, they don't want you. He, he's trying to do to us what he did to Job. Oh, you blessed him with everything. You blessed America with everything. Look at her. She's got money. She's got riches. She's got fame. She's got notoriety. She's got power. Look at your people in the Church of America. I bet you if you take all that away, they'll curse you. We're going to be tested. A personal relationship is going to be needed. Listen, we're being stripped of things right now. We don't need it. If you're being stripped of friends, that means you didn't need them. If you're being stripped, I have to say this even, of employment. It's because God says, I, I, I'm, I, I need you as my laborer now. I'm calling you out. Yes, amen. Amen. He needs laborers in this end time harvest field. He said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send laborers out into this harvest. For the fields are white. They're all ready to be reaped. And there's not enough workers. There's not enough laborers. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ is what needs to be developed. Next. Oh, dear. We must be filled with the Holy Spirit. See, that's an issue for some. That's an issue for some. I got an email a few days ago. Ah, probably about, it was well over a week ago. Precious sister, a viewer of Open Your Eyes, people. She says, um, Evangelist, 
I hear you, I tune in. I, I'm in agreement for the most part with what you say. And um, I'm just curious what she's not in agreement with, but anyway. <laughs> but no, she says she's in agreement. You know, she says, I'm, you know, I'm in agreement with, with you know, most of what you say. However, I'm a Catholic. And, uh, you know, I know you talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Spirit, but we don't need that. We can still do this walk. We can still do this work. I said, no, we can't. Are you nuts? Can a, can a car drive without gas? I mean, I know Jesus performs miracles, right? He turns water into wine. But in the last days, the Lord says that he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That's one of the greatest promises of the end times that we're living in. One of the greatest promises of the Father. In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. In the book of Daniel, it says that we will do great exploits. That's not done by our so-called good works, the fact that we're simply believers. Listen, the Bible says that the devil believes, the demons believe, and they tremble, meaning they fear God. That doesn't make them wise. We know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge of the Holy One, the beginning of understanding, yet the devil trembles. Demons tremble. So it's more than just a simple belief. It's fully surrendering your entire life to Jesus Christ so that you can receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We're not looking, you know, the Holy Spirit is not a spirit to be manipulated that you could just use at your own whim. You know, nowadays they'll say, I'm going to give a word of prophecy. Uh, I'm going to tell you where you live, your address, your phone number, your social security number, your driver's license number, and that's the gift of the spirit. No, it's not. That's witchcraft. I know the gifts of the spirit. The spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus Christ. If they're not preaching Jesus... The Holy Spirit ain't in it. Because Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will be given to you. The Comforter is going to come. And when he comes, he's going to tell you things about me and show you things to come. He's going to tell you all things about me. The Holy Spirit is crucial in helping us to understand who we are in these last days. Anointing us for service. I want you to go with me very quickly to the book of Acts. I see we're coming down on the time here. In the book of Acts chapter 2. Uh, chapter 1, forgive me. The book of Acts chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Acts chapter 1, I want to read in verse 4. It says here, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which Jesus said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons, which the Father, has put, in, which the Father put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. There's a couple of things I want to point out here in this particular portion of Scripture. In verse 8, the Lord Jesus himself says, you shall receive power. In the Greek, that's dunamis, meaning dynamite, explosive, on fire, holy powerful he tells us that we're going to receive this power not to go around acting like we can just again manipulate the holy spirit as if he's at our will no we are at his will he says when you receive power from the holy spirit when he has come upon you then you shall be witnesses to me throughout the entire earth the word witness here in the greek means martyr So God's given us power to die. That's how, I mean, that's what it says. He's given us power. He's anointing us for service, even all the way to death, so that we will not love our lives to the very death. 